Python is slow, like really slow. And a little while ago, I made a video about why Rust and not C is the best language for writing Python extensions to speed up your program. But it turns out I may have been wrong. Rust is hard to learn, but there's actually another compiled language that you can use for writing Python extensions, which borrows Python concepts and syntax making it a lot more familiar for existing Python devs while being many times faster. And no, I'm not talking about Mojo. In this video, we're going to explore using Nim for writing Python extensions. I'll run you through setting up Nim, writing your first Python package using it, and how it compares to Rust. Let's get nimble, my dudes. Nim is a statically typed, compiled systems programming language that takes inspiration from mature languages like Python, Ada, and Modular. Its memory management is inspired by C++ and Rust, and it offers some useful compile time features like function evaluation, and zero cost iterators, all of which is great. But the most useful thing for us is that it has a Python-esque syntax and philosophy that should make learning the language simple for any experienced Python developer. Like Python, white space in NIM is significant, but statements can span multiple lines. Get started by installing the Choose NIM CLI tool. Choose NIM is the equivalent of NVM or the Py command on Windows, allowing you to install and switch between versions of NIM. It should come with the latest version of NIM by default, but if it doesn't, use Choose NIM stable to download it. And make sure you add the newly installed Nimble binary to your path. Once you've got NIM installed, create a file ending in .nim. A NIM Hello World program looks like this, using the echo keyword to print a string to the console. Compile using NIM C and then run. Alternatively, use NIM C R to compile and run straight away. Congrats, you've just written your first NIM program. Here's some very naive code I wrote for calculating the nth Fibonacci number in Python. And now, here's the equivalent NIM code. Look at that, it's almost identical. Functions in NIM are called procedures and are defined with a proc keyword. Every argument must be typed as must the return value. In order to create a Python extension, we're going to need to use the NymPy package, which is a set of Python bindings for the Nim language. Install NymPy using nimble install, and then import it into your Nim module using import NymPy. Yet another thing that looks like Python. Once that's imported, all we have to do is add this strange looking syntax to our function definition. This construct tells Nim that we want to export our code for use with another language. It makes it really easy to compile Nim to C, C++, or even JavaScript. But in our case, we're telling NymPy that we want to export this function to Python. Finally, all that's left to do is compile the code. You can use NIMC with a few flags to accomplish this, and I'll leave both the Unix and Windows commands on screen, and there'll be a link to the NIMPy GitHub repo in the description. The dash D release flag here will build the binary in release mode, which will result in faster code, but also slightly longer compile times, so feel free to omit it during development. You can also use a CLI tool called NIMPorter, which will also be linked in the description, but it's not as actively maintained as NIMPy, and the doc seems slightly outdated. This should create a file called Fibonacci archie.so, which is our Python extension module. Now we can create a new Python file, fib.py, and import Fibonacci from within. Printing Fibonacci.fib with a number n should show us the nth Fibonacci number. Success! And if you want success in your programming career, you should probably subscribe to keep up to date with future videos. As a side note, you can export a class from Nim using a Nim type declaration and then exporting Nim functions that take that type as the first parameter. The parameter has to be named self, and the function will be turned into a method on your class. This is experimental, however so use it with caution. So just how much faster is Nim compared to Python? I used the time it module in Python to run the Python version of the function versus the Nim version a hundred times. Given that the time this function takes scales exponentially, I only ran tests up to the 30th Fibonacci number. The Nim version of the function was up to 30 times faster depending on n, and the higher n got, the greater the discrepancy between the two languages. And of course, this includes the overhead of calling out to the Nim code, which has a cost and actually made Python faster for n equals one. This is a fairly useless Microbenchmark as the function is very easily optimized, so it's possible to get it to run many times faster, even just in Python. We'll get to another test in the moment, but first I wanted to drag race the Nim version against the Rust equivalent I made in my video on how to create Python extensions with Rust. Rust went out every time, typically faster than Nim by about 30 to 35 percent. Next, I decided to benchmark a simple function to find the nth prime. Is the Python version? The Nim and Rust versions are very similar. This was run up to the 300th prime number and was a much closer race. Nim and Rust were typically only about 10 to 20 times faster than Python, likely because a lot of the operations used in Python were written in C. The really surprising thing, however, was that Nim and Rust were typically only a few percent apart. Rust usually took the crown, but there were a couple of instances where Nim actually ran faster. Of course, at these speeds, other processes running on my PC would definitely have affected the results, but it's still very impressive nonetheless. So, should you be learning Nim or Rust for speeding up your Python code? The answer is, it depends. Of course it does. Every question in software 
software engineering ultimately boils down to project requirements and engineering skill. However, I do have some thoughts and can make some recommendations. Rust has a much larger community than NIM and is a more mature language. As a result, you'll be able to get more support when learning and there are more third-party packages available to cover most needs. However, NIM is much easier to learn, especially if you just want to do something simple like this that doesn't require those libraries. It's also easier to get started with for actually creating the extensions. Tools like Matrin and Pyo3 do make it fairly straightforward for Rust, but with NIM, it's just smooth sailing all the way. So it comes down to this. If you already know Rust or your project has more complex requirements, then use Rust. Otherwise, NIM is probably as good a choice, if not better. What do you think? Let me know your opinions in the comments below and give NIM a go. And if you want to try it the Rust way anyway, you might be interested in watching this video here.